What's up guys, Anthony Tackett. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to cut glass. A lot of you might know if you follow me on social media that I've been having problems with my 3D printer, ranging from hot end issues, replacing a few things there, to my glass bed breaking a few times. And that's why I'm here today. I replaced it initially with some thinner glass that I bought at the home store. I, I bought a kit and I cut the glass and put this new sheet of PO Poly PEI on and went to pull off a large print. It stuck so well, it was a PLA, that I, I shattered the glass when I was pulling it off. Now I wasn't tweaking uh, too hard. I wasn't doing anything that I shouldn't have been doing. I think the issue was that I just bought too thin of a glass initially and the sheet glass that's used in picture frames uh, is very temperature sensitive and that was an issue on my part. So I've got some new glass. This is an old painter's palette that's pretty stinking durable. I've used it since college. I'm going to cut it up and make one piece out of that. Now there's a white film on the back that I'm going to have to pull off. And then I've got some thicker glass that was used in a, a glass door on a piece of furniture. So I figure both of these are going to be much tougher than standard picture frame glass. Uh, I think this video is going to be useful to you if you're a woodworker and you make your own frames, but also, you know, a lot of us print on glass uh, in 3D printing. So hopefully this will save you a few bucks like it did for me. And uh, let's just get to it with uh, materials. Okay, some things you'll need. First off, get a piece of cardboard or cloth or something to put down on your work surface. This just protects the glass and kind of spreads out the pressure. So if there's a little um, bump or something on your surface, that pressure won't be pushing just in one spot on the glass. And it provides a little bit of cushion uh, and a little bit of safety there. The next thing you're gonna need is something to mark on the glass with. This is a long nose pattern marker by FastCap. The next thing is a glass cutter and some cutting oil. Uh, cutting oil is probably optional. Uh, you're not always gonna be able to find oil with the cutter, but you can probably get the cutter at any home or craft store. Next thing is a ruler or a tape measure so that you can mark things out, uh, but we will also be using the ruler as a straight edge when we score the glass. I have a sanding block. This happens to be 3D printed. You can use sandpaper, but this just keeps your fingers away from that sharp edge of the glass. We're gonna be sanding that down. Obviously, safety is super important. So I've got my wife's gardening gloves here. They've got a rubber texture, so I'll be able to hold on to things, but it'll also protect my hand from getting cut up if I'm not careful. And eye protection. I also have a new sheet of PEI, and I'll have some alcohol prep pads on hand for prepping the glass for that. I won't do that until the very end of the video, so if you're interested in 3D printing, stick around, I'll show you how I apply this peel poly sheet. But let's go ahead and get to it. I'm gonna go ahead and set this sheet aside for now. What I'm gonna do is cut this down later off camera, you won't see it, but I'm gonna try and salvage the peel poly sheet that's on the, the broken glass that I have, see if the adhesive will work on this, that way I have two sheets as a backup. We're gonna be focusing primarily on this piece of glass from some reclaimed furniture. Okay, I'll move some stuff out of the way. And the first thing you wanna do is mark out for your cuts. And since this is longer, let's get the bulk of the material out of the way. And I know, I've written it on my cardboard here, that I need to make something that's eight and five eighths inches wide. So I'm just gonna use this ruler there's a nice tip on that marker, like I mentioned. And I'm gonna lay out eight and five eighths inches. And I'll put a mark on both ends. So there's one mark, two marks. Now I'm not gonna use the cutting oil. I found that it isn't really necessary for me. I think if you're doing a lot of cutting, then, then it's definitely something you want to use to help preserve your tool. But this is the glass tool. And basically when you cut, this is the wheel that focuses all of your force on a single point. And the way you hold it, usually they've got this little um, recess or indentation. Put your first finger there. We're gonna be using that to apply force. And then I just grip it with the 
um, breaker ball in the end, kind of grip it like this. And what I'm gonna do, this ruler has felt on the back to protect the glass, but I'm gonna take my tool, since that wheel is offset a little bit, put it on my mark, and then bring the ruler over to it. So I've got this end set, and I'll do the same thing here. Okay, now that my ruler is set in place, I know where I'm gonna cut. I have calculated for the offset of the edge of my tool. That might be different for you, so I'm not gonna tell you what that offset is. What you want to do is do this cleanly in one pass, because if you go over your score mark several times, the glass can start to flake, and that can cause a weakness that'll cause the break to run in the wrong direction. So you wanna make sure that you've got a good grip, you apply plenty of force when you score the glass. I'm gonna go ahead and get some painter's tape and tape that down so that it doesn't really shift around too much on me. Get it here. Put a little bit there, then I'll probably even put some in the middle. That just helps hold the ruler in place so that we're not sliding around everywhere. Okay, so it's very important to apply good force. Bring this through. Get that score to go all the way across. Okay, so now I can hear it even start to fracture right now. So what I need to do, I'm gonna flip this over. You can give it a snap. A lot of people will tell you to do that. That's kind of terrifying to me. So I'm going to take my ruler off, flip the glass over. It might break on its own. And then I'm gonna let the weight of the glass itself and then some slight knocking from this hammer break the glass. So you just go along your score line on the back of the glass and it will eventually break through. You know what I'm not doing? I'm not wearing gloves or glasses. Apologies, before I snap this or before it breaks, I'm gonna go ahead and do that. That way I don't have any loose glass flying around and cutting me. See, we make mistakes too, all the time. I'm not applying a ton of force, I'm just letting the weight of the ball do the work. There it goes. So I'm gonna move this piece out of the way now, and now we'll focus our efforts on this piece. I know that my next measurement is 10 and 7 eighths, so I'm gonna repeat the process there. You always wanna bring your cut over closer to your dominant hand, that way you've got the most control over your tool. There we go. So it's a rough edge, it's a rough cut, but what I can do now, set this aside, then bring out my sanding block. All right, at this point, you could drop this into your picture frame, but now I'm gonna go ahead and switch gears to 3D printing and show you how to apply the PEI sheet. I'm gonna go ahead and take these gloves and glasses off after I clean my work surface. Uh, and then we'll get going with that. All right, that, uh, that sanding block is actually 3D printed as well. I uh, found that guy to be pretty useful. Uh, you just put your paper in, tighten those guys down, and it's really nice, really handy, really, really sturdy too. So I'm just gonna pick a clean side Looks like this side's got some crud on it. So you can just use uh, the alcohol swabs or whatever cleaner you have laying around to give it a quick wipe. So now that we have that, I'll hit this with the isopropyl alcohol pad to get it good and clean. 
remove any oils or grease that's left on there. And that's just to help the adhesive adhere. One thing I didn't mention, I'm gonna use the edge, uh, like a flat edge, uh, this box in this case, to help spread out the PEI and to get rid of any air bubbles that might be there. I'm also going to lay out the PEI, center it up. Now that I like where this is sitting, I'll take more of that painter's tape. It's a 3D printer's best friend. And I'm gonna stick that down right here. So that's gonna give me a reference point so that this, when I start to peel the backing off, is going to lay down beautifully. And I'm gonna pull, oh, I don't know, a third of it off. And then I'm gonna start to bring it down again. And kind of bow it a little bit so that it helps to push out the bubbles on its own. Taking your smoothing tool, whether that be a credit card or whatever. Apply it, peel a little bit more, maybe another third of the backing off and go at it again. And then now I'm just gonna pull the backing off the rest of the way while I work with my smoothing tool. It's actually pretty satisfying. All right, at the very end, got rid of that adhesive backing. And now I can just go all the way around, push out any bubbles that might have shown up. That's a, and now just pull off your blue painter's tape and you have successfully applied your PO Poly or PEI, whatever brand you prefer. All right, guys, that's pretty well it. Uh, I hope you found this useful. This is a trade um, that I find to be highly valuable for me. As a woodworker, I make a fair amount of frames, so it's nice to be able to cut your own glass for that. Uh, as a 3D printer, it's super nice to be able to cut your own glass for your print bed. If you have any questions for me, uh, hit me up in the comment section. I'd love to hear from you. Uh, if you notice that I'm doing something wrong, uh, let me know that too. I found this to work really well for me. I found that using the, the breaker on the back of the tool is really handy and I feel a little bit safer doing that than I do snapping the glass. I know a lot of people uh, in their tutorial videos will just tell you to snap the glass. There's nothing wrong with that, but this is just kind of a slow and steady way for me to get what I want uh, and it works great on pieces about this size. To those of you who let the ads play at the very beginning of the video, thank you so much. It's very helpful. I'm going to get this on my printer and start rolling with the filament series again. I think Joe should have a video coming out very soon on that. I'm probably going to go ahead after I shut the camera off and cut an extra piece just to have as a backup as well. But as always, like, comment, subscribe. I appreciate you guys so much. Have a great day. See ya. Okay, I just had to turn the camera back on because I went to cut up that painter's palette without realizing what type of glass it was. And it's totally tempered glass, like you'd have in a car. This is why it's important to know what type of glass you're dealing with. I really wasn't sure, but this stuff just uh, exploded. So, uh, I'm 100% fine. Uh, nothing happened, just caught me off guard. I had scored the glass and then flipped it over to, to finish it up and uh, it just uh, opened up. So uh, be careful doing this, um, but it's, know, what, know what you're cutting. Uh, see you guys.